you know, there's one particular question that everyone is saying I should ask you before I continue my intro. Mm -hmm. They want me to ask you, what does PLO Patrick Lodge Otieno Lumumba? And are you related to... Um, mm. No, Dr. not at all. Lumumba? I'm not related to Patrice Emery Lumumba. I think our only relationship is that uh, we share certain ideals, including the desire to have a united, peaceful and prosperous Africa. Prof, mm -hmm. do you know what is going on in Tanzania oh, right now? Oh, I, I keep uh, abreast with everything in Tanzania. I know that my great good friend Tundu Lisu was in the German embassy and he wants to go back to Belgium where he came from to contest the elections under Chadema. I know that that is the latest information. So people are saying, yeah. do you agree with what Magufuli is doing in Tanzania? What right has Magufuli done? Let us look at things in context. First of all, let me tell you, mm. it is impossible in any election that is free and fair to beat Chama Chama Pinduzi. It is impossible. You can't form a party and start campaigning three months to an election and think that you can beat a party that has been in power initially as Tanu in, in, and has therefore been in power for over 50 years and which is essentially popular, is present in every sector of the economy. The, the opposition parties can excite people in the urban areas, which is typical with opposition parties, but you can't beat Chama Chama Pinduzi. And I'm, I'm very happy that today somebody has written in one of the regional newspapers here called the East Africa and has told the Tanzanian opposition, if you want to have a fair chance in future election, collapse all your parties and create one party. Because what you've been doing is that you split yourself so thin and many of you anyway started as members of CCM. So in truth, these elections were won by CCM. Despite what, what, what you are hearing, it, there is no way that you can beat Chama Chama Pinduzi. There are people in Tanzania, as I speak, in rural Tanzania, who when they vote CCM think are voting Unyerere. Says they think we are voting Unyerere. How can you deal with such a party? There are parties in Africa here which are so dominant in the minds of the people that it is not easy to displace them. Chama Chama Pinduzi is one. African National Congress is, one, is another one in South Africa. Swapo in Namibia. MPLA in Angola. Frelimo in Mozambique. But Thank from, you. do you know that you're loved by so many African countries? I'm humbled if that is the case. Because everyone was so excited. Yeah, that is very gave, kind. Like, I have over a thousand questions. No, tell them. And, uh, <laughs> because I, I told them I'm meeting Prof today. And there's something that a lot of them don't know. Yes. Prof on camera is so serious. You see how serious I am? I don't even know the questions <laughs> I need to ask him. But off camera, you have to meet Prof. <laughs> off camera. <laughs> I think because I, on, we, we are dealing with serious <laughs> issues. <laughs> You know, I was so shocked the first day I met you, you brought me juice and said, Ghanaians love juice. I'm like, this is the same prop that I've been watching. So, yeah, forget about the serial prop. It's another person not So, prop, these are questions that people want me to ask you. Yeah. But I just wanted you to scroll because it's... Let me questions. scroll and take yeah. three. So, prof, yeah, you can, just you can just scroll it and you can pick... Accountability. Just just yeah, okay. Scroll, scroll. Okay. You can scroll and then pick the one that you think you want to answer. I think you've answered most of that. The, the, I think uh, the first thing is the, the pathway to economic, realistically, I think that is a very important question. Mm -hmm. What is the realistic path? There were, those, there were always two approaches. The Nukuruma approach, which I call the Big Bang approach. Mm -hmm. We have one big Africa and we have an economy. The person who thought differently from Nukuruma at that time was Nyerere. Nyerere said, I agree with you, Sagiefo, but I want us to do it a little slowly because of our tradition. Let us go regional. Let us start with East African community as a building block and we strengthen East African community. And then at that time there was no SADC because they were under control of apartheid South Africa and the Portuguese. But now he would say, let us also strengthen SADC let us go to Central Africa and strengthen Central African Republic. Let us go ECOWAS. Let us go the Maghreb. And once the, un the units are strong enough, 
then they will be collapsed under the African Union. Mm. And I think under the Kagame reforms, in 2016, the African Union uh, ma mandated President Paul Kagame of Rwanda to look at the reforms. And that is how confident people now are that we do it under the SCFTA, which in itself is a product of the Lagos Plan of Action of 1980. And when we do so, the regional blocs are going to assist. Like in East Africa, we say that we start with a common market, we then go into a common currency and ultimately a political federation. So realistically, I think that the regions or the RECs, regional economic communities, are the building blocks and ultimately the roof is going to be the African Union. That, I think, would constitute a realistic approach. Somebody is asking how often does European attempt to bribe me? No, no European has ever tried to, uh, to, to bribe me. They are only irritated by me. <laughs> what should be done to end the unrest in DRC and all African countries' extremist rising? In fact, that I think is a very fundamental question and it allow me to answer all the other questions. Mm. As we speak now, and before even I say what we speak about, this year, the year 2020, was declared by the AU as the year of silencing the guns. And the whole idea of silencing the guns was informed by the realization that you cannot have any meaningful economic development, any meaningful political stability, any meaningful uh, social cohesion if people are fighting. And where are people fighting? People are fighting in the Sahelian region, you know, because it is in your neighborhood. People are fighting in northern Mali, people are fighting in Mauritania, people are fighting in the Cameroons, people are fighting in Burkina Faso, northern part of it, people are fighting in Central African Republic, people are fighting in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, there is conflict in Darfur, in the Sudan and in the Nuba Mountains, there is conflict as we know in, uh, northern, uh, in northern Mozambique as we speak now and right just two weeks ago we now know that there is a conflict that has emerged in Ethiopia, the central government, federal government fighting Tigray and other things are beginning to happen in that area. I hold the view that Africa and a number of African countries must be renegotiated. And this is not incompatible with the unity of Africa. I remember John Garang de Mabior when he was fighting for the dignity and self-determination of the people of South and Southern Sudan. He told the Khartoum government, make unity attractive. Make us feel that we are equal citizens in Sudan, why do you want to make us Muslims? Why do you want to make us Arabs? Was God foolish to make us Dinkas and Nuers and to make us black? Isn't God a God of diversity? Can't we, in our diversity, live in one country with respect, he asked. And the same argument is the argument that the people are asking in the Cameroons, telling the BIA administration, can't we live in dignity? Why must we quarrel about languages that are not our own, French and English? And indeed, how many people speak French and English in Yaoundé or in, 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 other, in Boya? So I think that one of the most urgent things that must be done now is for countries to re renegotiate. There is no one single formula. In Nigeria, we see, when you listen to Namdi, uh, Mazi, Namdi, Kanu, you hear the IPOB, you hear the Odudua Republic, mm -hmm. even in Ghana now, you hear the former Togoland, yeah. in the Democratic Republic of Congo, we have so many of these uh, groups that are emerging. And let me tell you, the Europeans love it. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, one of the busiest air spaces in Africa, private jets lifting uranium, lifting gold, lifting coltan. And I think if I were ever to work at the African Union, there should only, in the, two meetings, three meetings, meeting number one with only a single agenda item, we have recognized all the problems of Africa. We know them, they have been documented. Therefore, what should we do to solve those problems? 
The next meeting agenda item number two. How should we do it? And the next meeting within what time frame? And I would in that context convene a meeting that includes all the secessionist forces in Africa. All of them. All the rebel movements. You invite them and give them security so that they are able to explain to governments what they want. Let them tell us what is it, what is it, why can't we work? Because as long as we don't have peace and stability and security and we have insecurity and we have all these conflicts, we cannot grow. You cannot grow in an environment where there is insecurity. And of course, the other thing that you talked about is that uh, we must rethink our education system. We must rethink our education system. Your own countryman, Aikwe uh, Iyama, at one time wrote a book, two books, in fact, which I commend to young people. The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born and The Healers. And in The Healers, it, where are the healers? It is you who are going to be there. I have so much faith, perhaps too much faith, perhaps too much expectation for the younger generation. Prof, there's this thing that I think I need to do for you before I leave you. Mm. Because I feel like you know a lot. Mm. I mean, like you're saying things about my own country that mm. I don't know about. Yes. And, Prof, don't you think that, like, you need to have your own channel where, like, you have time, sit down and talk to us? Why like, can't I use your channel? Yes, Prof. <laughs> I, I, Prof, that would be fantastic. But yeah. I, want, I want to do this for you. Yes, let's not create another channel. No, we are not, you, you're going to, Prof, you're going to use my channel. Yes. It, it's for you anytime you want. Yes. But, Prof, I, I feel like, you should come up and address us every single day, like any time that you're free. I, I cannot be here. We we'll organize. I, I can do it for you, get you like, all of them are watching, they know this is what I do, like mm. I did for Juliet, Black mm. Sit, that's what I did. I can do this for you and whatever you have time, just come and speak to us and I can circulate it for you because maybe you might have something on your mind that you think you have to share, but no one will come to you and tell you that Prof need to tell us this. Yes. You see, so Prof, I think it's very, very necessary. We'll organize that because I, one of the things that I believe in, you are doing a good thing and many young people are doing good thing. What we do is to strengthen and energize you. And, and uh, that is our contribution to the good work that you are doing. Prof, I, I, I will help you send a lot of Thank you. out there. Thank you. I'm humbled by uh, that. And um, you said something that went viral and yeah. everyone is saying, I should ask you, you said, the day that Nigeria will wake up, Africa will be great. You know, one in every five Africans is a Nigerian by nationality. And I described it as the African heat. And SARS has gone underground, is in comatose, and the government thinks that it has solved the problem. No. That was a statement by young Nigerians that we are dissatisfied, that there are certain things that we want done. I hope that the administration in Nigeria will, in a very programmatic manner, begin to address those issues. And when I say the day Nigeria wakes up, if you have 250 million people, some of the most educated men and women in the world are Nigerians. There are more Nigerian doctors in the United States of America and the United Kingdom than there are in Nigeria. There are Nigerian engineers, there are Nigerian teachers, there are Nigerian business people. I mean, Nigeria is the engine. The Nigerian population is larger than the population of all ECOWAS countries combined. That tells you that if you make Nigeria great, it will be a magnet. And that is why I think Nigeria, deliberate effort must be made to make Nigeria stable. And Nigeria must also be renegotiated so that these tensions, I want the central administration to listen to what Namdi Kanu is saying. I want them to listen to what the Odudua is saying. I want them to listen to what the men are saying. Because when you have a conflict in your house with your children, what do you do? Do you beat them? You do stop talking to them? You call them at a table and you ask them, it is in our best interest that we retain this thing. But what is it that you don't like? And if you do that in humility, then you will listen to the people and restructure your country in a manner that makes it sustainable. It is doable. I remember those of you who are spiritually inclined on the day that God was creating man, there was a conversation. He asked, 
and let us create men in our own man in our own image there was a conversation in the heavens why can't we have a conversation here on earth we have african diaspora mm -hmm. africans that were born in the diaspora or africans that were born here and then later moved to the west um doc there is this something that i've been saying on my channel that it's time to make africa home again yes it's time for each and every african to know that africa is home and it's time for us to come together and build africa do you think that it's time for africans on the continent to join hands with africans in the diaspora to build the africa that we are all looking for it is already happening you know africa once africa is inside of you even when you are geographically not present in her she is present in you and I know the activities of quite a number of people in the Caribbean. Only yesterday I talked to somebody who was in Guyana, is a friend of mine, General Wallace, who is the ambassador of uh, Antigua and Barbuda in Nigeria, who is a great African. There is our sister, Arikana Chihombori Kwao. There is Rosenthal. There are so many people, Palacio in Belize, in uh, Latin America. So that there are 250 million plus people of African origin out there. And what I now see them doing, they are not relocating because they, those countries belong to them. They built them. That is Africa extended. That is exten that, those are extensions of Africa. So we are not just about to abandon them. But they know that the mothership is here. That is how I understood the year of return. And the year of return was simply, simply symbolic. And I would want to hear that year of return being emulated by many African countries so that the Africans who are uh, resident in Brazil can now trace their, uh, their origin to what is now called Angola, to Mozambique, to Guinea-Bissau, uh, to Gabon and all those countries. So I can't agree with you more. All of us in the diaspora, those in our kith and kin in the diaspora must combine to make mothership good again. Good again. Thank you. Listen to you. The Thank final you. message for the African diaspora and Africa. the African diaspora, my kith and kin, wherever you are, you must always recognize that the mothership is the continent and that you have an obligation which is divine to ensure that you work with us and we work with you so that the relationship is symbiotic with only one single aim to make Africa great again for this generation and generations yet to be born. In this struggle, your contribution is to do your very best because as I've said before and I repeat it here, the greatness of the forest starts with a single tree. The greatness of the ocean starts with a single drop. Be a good tree that the forest may thrive. Be a single good drop that the ocean may be great in its splendor. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.